He was on a fast track to fame, Mac Phipps, a rapper on the rise, performing with Snoop and Master P. And tonight, Louisiana's pride hip hop artist is center stage. He wanted to be able to help a lot of these up and coming rappers. But before the night is out, a star will fall and lives will be shattered, changed forever with the echo of a single gunshot, leaving one man dead and Mac Phipps behind bars. And today, his family sits down with Crime Watch Daily, hoping to prove authorities convicted the wrong guy, claiming there is no physical evidence against Mac, making allegations of bribing witnesses, and then dropping this bombshell that another man has openly confessed to the killing. Are you shocked? Are you confused? Are you angry? It broke my heart because I'm like, you in jail for something you really didn't even know what had happened. All you knew was a fight that broke out and someone got shot. Rapper Mac Phipps is a phenomenon. In the game since age 11, when he broke into the big time with his own music video, I Need Wheels, as Lil Mac, the lyrical midget. I need wheels. By the time he was 12 years old, he, was, um, he had recorded his first album. Succeeding beyond his wildest dreams. He was constantly traveling, you know, and going places. And, you know, he did this big tour with Snoop and went all over the world. His album, uh, the first one, I think, uh, went platinum. The second album went gold. People loved him because they thought he was like the Tupac of the South. Mac is the oldest of six children to parents married for 40 years, and his family has his back all the way. We was trying to start a management company, and what I would do is I would book um, shows, small shows in different little small clubs around Louisiana. Tonight, Mac is hosting an open mic at a place called the Club Mercedes near Baton Rouge. He's looking for a new talent to represent, but he is a little hesitant about this gig. Mac was really uncomfortable about the club in the beginning because the, the crowd was a little rowdy. Close to 100 people packed the room as Mac's parents watch the door and take tickets. In another part of the club, Chad Phipps stays close to his brother Mac when trouble begins. What do you remember and what plays out for you the most? There were a few people in there who were dancing and getting a little bit too rowdy. I knew it was going to escalate. The room erupts into a battle zone with fists flying. Then suddenly, two distinct sounds throw the crowd into a frenzied panic. Then you hear like a bottle break and a gunshot. Mac Phipps Sr. is a Vietnam combat veteran. His instincts kick in immediately. My immediate reaction was to dive on the floor because I know bullets, it was like a chaos. Chad says he and Mac hustle out the back door. People toward the back and the door started running. So somebody in that area must have seen the gunshot. I didn't. But then he says Mac runs back inside, deeply worried for the safety of his parents. Chad follows him. You can hear some guy yelling in the, toward the front of the bar and kicking over tables. My brother reached and grabbed his gun and pointed it in the air. Does he fire a shot? No, no shots were ever fired. His mother says Mac carries the gun for his own safety on the road. A registered firearm, a little small gun that he carried because for protection. But tonight, that decision is going to have huge consequences. According to him, he, he held it above his head, so that way whoever was shooting could see, hey, you know, I got a gun too. And, and he was running around the club holding this gun, saying, who's shooting, who's shooting? Crime writer David Lohr has spent years studying the case. When police arrived on the scene, uh, they had several individuals say, hey, well, you know, we saw uh, Mac Phipps uh, with, a, with a gun in his hand. Mac's father is gathering the family when he says he spots a young man lying on the floor with a woman helping him. I asked her, I said, is he all right? And she said, yeah, he all right. He just got shot in the arm. They leave the club and head for home in Baton Rouge. But that night, there's a knock on the door. It's the police, and they're looking for Mac. You had uh, policemen with shotguns and pistols. They came over there and asked me, are you Mac? I said, uh, no, I'm his father. And they said that, uh, Oh, a Mac is wanted for a murder. And they are also looking for every gun in the house, including the one Mac was carrying at the club. As an ex-military man, Mac Phipps Sr. collects guns, and he turns all of them over to police. They got everything. No, no, none of those guns were ever fired. And they arrest Mac, charged with the murder of 19-year-old Baron Victor. 
the young man Mac's father says he saw lying on the floor, who later dies at the hospital. Unknown to me, the bullet had went in his arm and went in his, in his chest. At Mac's trial a year later, several witnesses testify that he fired that shot that killed Baron Victor, even though police find that the actual murder weapon is not among the guns taken from Mac's house, and in fact, has never been recovered. According to Mac, there is no physical evidence tying him to the shooting. They did gunshot residue tests on his hands. Uh, they, they came back negative. You no know, gunshot residue or anything was found on his clothing. We know that Mac's gun was not the gun that was used to shoot Baron Victor. They had no evidence whatsoever. All they had was the statements of some individuals alleging that Mac was the shooter. Authorities deny conducting those tests, and it's not exactly a jury of Max Peers that is seated for the trial in the St. Tammany Parish Courthouse. The same week as the September 11th terrorist attacks in New York and Washington. You know, his trial was held during September 11th when the, the prosecutor was continually referring to him as an assassin. This is a parish David Duke lives in. It's a, a parish where he once was an elected official. Mac had an all-white jury. There, there wasn't a single African-American uh, on his jury. The family says the prosecution also painted Mac as an outlaw rapper, the man called the camouflage assassin. The camouflage assassin, what does that mean? That is simply a nickname he had. It was just hip hop. He was a lyrical assassin, not a person who kills people. At least two witnesses claim Mac is the shooter. In the end, he is convicted of manslaughter with a sentence of 30 years to life and is still serving time today at the Elaine Hunt Correctional Center, leaving his family stunned and in shock. For them to muddy his name the way they did and to, and to depict him like a criminal is really hurtful. Excuse my expression. Okay. But that's only the beginning of the madness for Mac and the Phipps family. Next. A bombshell twist. A man turns himself in, claiming he's the killer. Could he be Mac Phipps' key out of prison? I looked up, he was charging me. 